There are several reasons why lionfish numbers have exploded in the Atlantic. For one, the animals reproduce frequently. Lionfish reach maturity at a very small size, a very young age, so very quickly in their life they're able to reproduce. And they're pair spawners, so a single male and single female get together and reproduce. In the warmer climates like South Florida and the, and the islands, the Caribbean and the Bahamas, lionfish can reproduce throughout the year. We'll open it up and I'll show you guys this. This entire thing is one ovary. They have two of them. All these tiny little spots, each of them is an egg. So some work that's been done up at the NOAA lab in North Carolina shows that there's up to 30,000 eggs in one spawn, and that this is happening every four to six days in the Caribbean year-round. So that's one reason why they're so successful in establishing all over the place. Another reason why lionfish have inundated the Western Atlantic and Caribbean is the fact that they have no known predators or parasites in this part of the world. They can put a lot more energy into growth and reproduction. And we see lionfish here in the Atlantic and Caribbean much larger than they're known to grow in the native range. Native range maximum size is reported to be about 35 centimeters and here we're finding lionfish almost half a meter in length, and that, that is a big, big lionfish. To better understand how lionfish move and grow, the scientists are tagging them on those study sites where they haven't been captured. And we tag them underwater, rather than bringing them to the surface, which could cause some some barotrauma pressure change injuries on the fish and would require uh, anesthetizing the fish and it'd be a very lengthy detailed process. The process is a little bit tricky. You're dealing with the live fish on the bottom with venomous spines. It involves using a small strip of plastic attached to a sewing needle. This thin plastic strip is called a Floy streamer tag and it has a serial number and contact information and we put that right through the base of the tail of the fish. And the hope is we can revisit some of the sites that we tagged fish and adjacent reef areas and see if we can recapture those fish at a later date to get that movement and growth information. And the information that we're getting out of these tagging studies is vitally important to designing control programs that'll be effective. And when we do recollect the fish after the tagging at the end of the research, we don't let them go again. To do all this time-intensive work, Ladd and Stephanie rely heavily on the help of volunteers who assist in their efforts. And we were doing all sorts of stuff, whether it was uh, helping hold the bags, uh, literally to physically um, collect the lionfish, uh, to once they've been tagged, then we would take them back to their original site and let them go. The volunteers have been extremely crucial in a couple of ways to the lionfish research. Through using volunteers, you can collect a large amount of scientific data that normally you wouldn't be able to because researchers don't have a lot of money or time. To me, it's just my little pot trying to eradicate a problem. That's my whole desire, and I hope other people out there have the same feelings I do and jump on board to help. As part of their research, the scientists have observed all kinds of interesting behavior, including this video lad shot of two lionfish fighting for dominance. Lionfish are related to the scorpion fish, and all scorpion fish have a pretty bony head. And uh, we've seen aggressive posturing between male lionfish. And they use these bony cheeks up against each other's sides to kind of rake along the side uh, when they're having a little tiff, trying to determine who's the dominant male for, for spawning with females. Scientists say there's still a lot they need to learn about lionfish, such as how old they get and at what depths they can live. The depth ranges of lionfish we know are as shallow as inches deep up against a shoreline. And we don't know the maximum depth yet, but we know at least as deep as 500 feet. A report from a submarine, and 
uh, saw lionfish that deep. The one thing experts do know is that these animals present a major threat to the biodiversity and ecosystem health of this region. The spread since 2007 has been more dramatic than any of us could have imagined. So rapid, so intense, the population uh, has exploded in areas that become invaded. And we're finding in many instances that lionfish have likely reduced populations by up to 90% in just four short years since colonizing the area. So we've seen huge reductions in the numbers of fish, also potentially in diversity. And so the impacts of these fish are profound. At this time, removal of the lionfish seems to be the only solution to this growing problem. Eradication is not likely going to be possible based on what we know right now, but we can control populations to a level that the impacts may be minimized. And, and right now, that's a major, major goal. And we know we are the ultimate at being able to wipe out marine life, wipe out fish stocks, but we have to have that incentive to do it. And that incentive is money. I think developing a market for lionfish is a very smart way to go. And for larger lionfish, that market is a food market. They really are a delicious fish. And that's you know, probably one of the saving graces of this whole invasion is the fact that you can actually consume them and it, that they taste so good. Lionfish taste similar to hogfish and snapper, and the meat can be prepared in a variety of ways. Nutritional studies have shown that lionfish are actually higher in omega-3s than some of the more common food fish, and efforts are currently underway to develop a commercial market for lionfish. Bermuda has developed a slogan, they say, eat them to beat them, and I really think that's a good way to go. To make catching the animals more efficient, the researchers are testing out a variety of different traps. We're trying a few different trap designs and a few different baiting schemes to see if we can design something that would be effective for lionfish, but not have a lot of other bycatch and not impact the other fish species as well. We actually have been able to catch some lionfish in our traps, but the amount of bycatch that we caught during that same trapping scheme was just too high to be really considered an effective removal. So we've adjusted some of our trapping treatments and we're trying a few different things now. We're uh, putting escape panels into the traps and, and we'll just keep at it to see if we can come up with an effective design for lionfish. Maybe we can't. Maybe bycatch is always going to be too high, but that's something that we need to know. Diver removals can be very effective where they can dive, but you know you can't dive everywhere. But fishermen can deploy traps in a, in a wide range of areas. So if we can have that effective trap design, we think we can engage the fishing community. In an effort to get the public involved in capturing the fish, the Reef Environmental Education Foundation and its partners began organizing fishing tournaments, or derbies, in the Bahamas in 2009. Since then, the derbies have caught on in other areas, including the Florida Keys. Basically what the derby's goal is, is to raise awareness about lionfish and also uh, dispel some of the rumors that the meat is venomous. Coming out as early as 6.30 a.m. sunrise. Cash prizes are offered as incentives for fishermen to participate. Oh, if you're at a site, you oh yeah, they did pretty well. 115. We have most lionfish per boat, and then we also have largest lionfish, and we do smallest lionfish too, <laughs> unlike other spearfishing tournaments. You can use a spear, you can use nets, whatever method of collection you like. The most lionfish of the entire derby with 111 lionfish Yay! is raw talent. Yay! 
Uh, these derbies, though, the, the main purpose of them is to raise awareness and get people involved in collecting lionfish. And also, we have a big cookout at the end of the derby, and people get to try lionfish and taste for themselves how delicious they are. And as long as people have incentive to harvest, they will harvest. Much is being done to raise awareness of the lionfish invasion and to figure out ways to halt the problem. While certain areas in the Bahamas are already overrun with lionfish, experts hope that it is not too late to keep this from happening in other parts of the invaded range where the animals are just now beginning to establish. Why not just let this run its course? Let it become part of the system and, you know, it'll assimilate and everything will find its way to work out. And that's a very valid question. And I understand that question and the viewpoint that some people may have along those lines. However, this is not a natural occurrence. This is a man-made occurrence. It's, in effect, biological pollution that we're seeing. And it's up to us to fix the problem. If we let it run its own course, our native species, who are not at fault, are the ones that are going to pay the price, and we will ultimately pay the price following that. And I think that's a good enough reason for us to really want to address this invasion and remove lionfish. This really is a region-wide threat that's potentially one of the worst ecological disasters that the Caribbean could face. But really, it's also a huge opportunity for us to be proactive on a conservation issue. I think humans have made a history out of not being proactive when it comes to conservation, when it comes to understanding the problems that are out there and doing something about them before they really take over a system. A lot of marine conservation, you're telling people, don't do this, don't do that, don't go here, don't go there. With lionfish, we're saying, yes, do get involved, do go out and fish for them, do eat them. And I think that is really a benefit if there is anything you know, to be optimistic about is the fact that you can bring people together on this. Major funding for this program was provided by the Bachelor Foundation, encouraging people to preserve and protect America's underwater resources.